Hi, I'm Elena Pakutova, curator at the Rubin Museum of Art in New York. We explore the art and ideas represented in the cultures of the Himalayas. And he might be surprised to find how relevant they are for us today, especially in dealing with our hectic lifestyle and in particular today, during the time of crisis we find ourselves in right now. So today I will show you two works of art and then the practitioner of Tibetan medicine, Dr. Tony Tidwell, will give you some practical advice on how to face off agents of illness, including virulent infections. This painting we're looking at right now depicts different types of causes and conditions that lead to development of all sorts of fevers, from being exposed to cold, various contagions, infection, and so forth. And you notice in particular that there are many social situations depicted, and some of the fevers are indicated as being caused by environment. This continue in the following painting where there are also different kinds of other contagious fevers are depicted. We can see that in the top left of the painting and then continuing down throughout. And now Dr. Tidwell offers some practices to balance your body and mind so that opportunistic infections have less of a chance to take hold. Hi, my name is Tawny Tidwell. I am a Tibetan medical physician working in this field for, gosh, now about 20 years and a researcher at neuroscientist Richie Davidson's Center for Healthy Minds. And so Tibetan medicine is quite a sophisticated understanding of the role that the mind plays in supporting the body and how the mind or various mental states or emotional patterns and uh, responses can be our greatest ally or one of our greatest vulnerabilities. And something that you might not know is that Tibetan medicine has had a long history of dealing with infectious disease. So in the tonka that Elena just introduced to you, and then also the beginning of the next tonka, all the different causes and uh, inciting conditions that lead to these kinds of infections. And these come from um, various environmental sources of infected individuals, contaminated food, objects, areas that have these uh, pathogenic transmissions, um, and also areas that have been contaminated. Along with this, we also see uh, illustrated different behaviors, mental states of rage and fear and panic of the conduct of kind of mindlessness, um, this chaotic way of handling, um, interacting with our social relations, um, our responsibilities, right? And so the importance of our daily routines and behaviors in protecting us from infection. So one way that we can do that is through the cultivation in our diet and medicine, which in your homes you can use um, even teas as a, as a way to start exploring this. And that is integrating more um, bitter greens into um, your daily and your weekly diet. And so these are your dandelion greens, your kale, your chard. These are the mustard family, so even mustard greens, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. For the more fresh greens, for your salads, these are the brassica um, derivatives like your endive, right? You can have watercress, arugula, endive, radicchio. And if you're really adventurous, uh, you can try some bitter melon. It's quite uh, common in India and China, um, but it's very bitter. <laughs> so proceed with caution. And uh, one way to prepare it is it's this long melon that has these kind of mottly uh, growths on it, almost like warts. And you can slice it open, pull out those white seeds and that white inner um, uh, fibrous filling, cut it up in nice semicircle rounds and then you can steam it with a little sea salt or cumin you can saute it in a little olive oil with some black mustard seed and it's really delicious helping support your liver to detoxify your blood and help imbue it with the qualities of blood that we're looking for in terms of 
healthy vital blood. And so I'm closing your minus L S to nourish our internal ecosystems with that warm heartedness of developing healthy blood for strengthening our immune system and giving us the strength and resilience to also offer our hearts. When we direct our attention outside of ourselves and really look at generating this quality of warm heartedness, generosity of our kindness, really we come out of that moment of fear, come out of that um, kind of preoccupation with the vulnerability and start looking at how we can bring healing and balance into this, into the greater world system. And so just to offer a few words of aspiration that may all beings be safe, may all beings be protected, may all beings be free from harm, may all beings be healthy, may all beings have ease, and may all beings flourish. Thank you so much, and I invite you to leave your comments down below so we can continue the connection and sharing in this community together. So thank you.